In this video, we're going to work on a problem you can download from TonyBell.com. Go to the website, click the PDF link, and you'll notice there's no sign in, no sign up. The PDF just pops right up. You'll scroll down and find whatever problem it is that we're working on. As you scroll through the problems, you'll notice many are free and open, like the one you're watching now, but some are members only. I think the free and open ones are enough for most people, but if you can't get enough of me and you'd like to join and get access to those members only videos, click the join button underneath the YouTube play box. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Let's get started. Let's run through problem 41A. I'll read through the question and we'll kind of discuss it as we go. You're considering buying a 10 year thousand dollar bond with a coupon rate of 9% and semi-annual coupons. So. 10 years, semi-annual coupons means there's 20 payments, right? 20 interest payments. Its yield to maturity is 8%. So big picture, when you're contemplating a bond, you have two cash flows to track. One, these 20 semi-annual payments, which is an annuity. So with a bond, we take the present value of an annuity and it's just those 20 every six months there's interest to be paid back and then at the end of it the uh borrower the, the person you buy the bond from has to pay you back the thousand dollars it's a it's a loan you're loaning them a thousand dollars and they're making interest payments along the way and so that's the second piece of this there's the present value of that thousand dollars you're however much you'll loan them up front so we'll solve at least a part of this problem by hand just to show you the math and it can be done by hand very easily but we'll focus in on our financial calculator as we solve the problem so i'll solve it first with a financial calculator then i'll solve maybe part a with just by hand to show you it can be done but let's solve it with our financial calculator okay you're considering buying a 10-year thousand dollar bond coupon rate nine percent semi-annual payment semi-annual coupons its yield to maturity is eight percent calculate the price of the bond today. Here's what we're going to input into our calculator. The N is uh, 20, right? There's 20 semi-annual payments, 20 periods. Our IY is this yield to maturity, and the yield to maturity is 8%, but remember, the, when you're quoted interest rates, you're quoted for the year, we need to break that into six months, so for a six-month period, that's half. It's 4%. Um, per semi-annual payment, right? Per six month period. Our PV is unknown. That's what we're solving for. Our payment amount is what we promise. And what we promise is the coupon rate. So it's a thousand dollar bond. 9% coupon means it's a $90 payment. But the fact that it's semi-annual, this is $90 per year, divide by two to get your payment, which is $45 per six month period. Our FV is a thousand bucks. That's what we get paid back at the end of this. So we're saying, what's the present value of those cash flows? 20 payments of $45. That's what this is summarizing. And a thousand dollar lump sum coming to us at the end of the bond. I smacked my microphone. I said, coming to us and smacked my mic. Okay, let's, uh, let's solve it. Hopefully I'm still speaking into the mic. Yeah, my meters are still working. Uh, okay, so let me just clear any... Uh, information I have in my calculator, I hit 20 as my N, uh, 4 as my IY, PV is unknown, PMT is 45 positive, this is cash flowing to us, 1000 FV positive, this is cash flowing to us, and I compute the PV, and the answer is, I gotta pay 1067 to get those cash flows, that's the value of those cash flows today, 1,067.5. Nine five, And this is not a surprise that it's more than $1,000. The reason is the coupon rate, 9%, is higher than the yield to maturity, 8%. It means our coupon is going to be attractive and people will pay a premium. This is a higher coupon rate than the risk level of the bond might dictate. People will pay a higher amount for it. There's a premium of $67 on this bond. And had the coupon rate been lower, there would be a discount. And I think that's the B version of this problem shows a discount. Uh, assuming no changes in interest rate, calculate the price of the bond in five years. So this is asking us, okay, everything else in the bond is equal, but just change the N. What is our new N? Well, five years, or it's a 10 year bond, five years from now, there's five years left, which means there's 10 payments left, right? There's two payments a year, there's five years left. So our N is 10. 
everything else is equal. So again, nice feature of the financial calculator. All I do is put in 10 as N, everything, I could re-input everything, right? Put the IY, but it's already in there. So now I compute PV and I get 1040.55. All right, the third scenario. Uh, so that's the answer, right? Assuming no changes, calculate the price of the bond. In five years, it's 1040.55. Uh, what about the price of the bond in nine years? Okay, the price of the bond in nine years. So in nine years, how many periods are left on the bond? How many interest payments are left? And the answer is, well, I got one year left. So there's two payments a year, two payments. So N is two in that circumstance. So I put two in as my N and I compute PV and I get 1009, 1009.43. Okay, there we have it. Uh, so we've solved A, B, and C. Part D says explain the movement in the bond price. We expect bonds over time as they get closer and closer to the maturity date in other words as they're you know getting closer and closer to the day they have to pay back the value gets closer and closer to the face value any discount or premium as we have a premium here shrinks right the premium was 67 bucks today 40 bucks five years from now and nine bucks nine years from now the premium is going to go down to zero because they're just going to pay me back a thousand dollars with without a premium or without a discount so we expect the movement of any bond to be closer and closer to the maturity value as the maturity date approaches. So uh, again, closer and closer to a thousand dollar face value as the maturity date approaches. Okay, there we have it. We've solved 418. I will do a little chunk of this by hand, but if that's enough for you, that's enough for you. And it'd be enough for me to hit one of those buttons. Hey, if you're going to stick around, why not hit one of those buttons anyway? It's, it feels good to do it. Feels good. Uh, make you feel good. Make me feel good. Um, Okay, let's do this by hand, though, and see how you're uh, coping with doing it by hand. Uh, the present value of the annuity is the payment amount. We said the payment was 45 bucks. So C is cash flow, the regular cash flow, 45 times 1 minus 1 over 1 plus the interest rate. And this is the uh, IY. This is the, the um, yield to maturity divided by 2. So 4%, 1.04 to the power of T, it's 20. Sorry, I'm, I'm redoing part A, just to be clear. I'm calculating the bond price. <coughs> oh my goodness. Oh, forgive the coughing attack. I will uh, mute that in post. <laughs> okay, so uh, we were just kind of coming up with our time period and what we'd said was, well, we're doing part A. And so for part A, this is a 10 year bond, 20 payments. So our T is 20. I had like a real tickle in my throat there. Uh, we divide that by R, which is 0 0.04. And so there we have it. We have our payment 45 times. And then what's in brackets, that's going to give the present value of those, uh, regular interest periods. What about the present value of the lump sum? Well, again, we're getting paid $1,000 back at the end of the bond, divide by 1.04, 1 plus R to the T, 1.04 to the power of 20. Okay, let's crunch our numbers. And then I'll uh, stop the video and cough away. Uh, 1.04 to the power of 20 is 2.19. 1 minus 2.19, no, 1, so pardon me, 1 over 2.19, so I go 1 over x, then I go 1 minus that answer, so minus 1, hit the plus minus, 0.54, divide by 0.04, I get 13.59 times 45. 611.56 is the present value of the interest. Well, what about the $1,000 I get at the end of the bond? You go 1.04 to the power of 20. You divide 1,000 by that, so 1 over x times 1,000. And that's worth 456.39. Add these two together. <laughs> you can hear a frog in my throat. 611.56 uh, plus 456. Let's do it. 611.56 plus 456.39. And we find the present value of our bond is 1067.95.
and that's what we had done in our calculator. Now we could very easily do this for five years and 10 years. All you would do if you wanted to do it for five years, you would change this exponent to 10 because that's the amount of time remaining on the bond. You would change this to 10. And if you wanted to do it for nine years out, you would change the exponent to two and this exponent would become two. And you could solve them all that way. And if, if you had to, you could, and it's not even that much slower. You could do this by hand reasonably quickly, but we did it uh, with our calculator first and we have solved the problem. <laughs> all right. I got to remember to edit the coffee out of the video. Uh, thanks so much for watching as always, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.